On today's Muscle Car of the Week, we're in Trans Am Alley, and we've got a killer one to show you, a 1970 Ram Air 4 four-speed Pontiac Trans Am. Pontiac Trans Ams have always been about style and performance, and this 1970 and a half Ram Air 4 Trans Am is, it is so cool. It's got so much going on from the way it looks to what's under the hood. This is one of the coolest cars in the Brothers collection. When you first look at this car, you notice that the polar white paint is a very bright white, but it's got a very cool singular Trans Am stripe on the rear deck lid, and it also goes down the nose uh, over the shaker hood scoop, and it ends with the blue Firebird on the very tip of the nose of the car. Uh, this graphic is a little bit different than the 69 Trans Am, which had two painted blue stripes. Uh, this one, if you look at it closely, you can see there's a little color fade in it, and it's kind of a medium blue, and it goes to a darker blue at the outside edge. Sometimes the sequel is not as good as the original, but in the case of the second generation F-Body, like this 1970 Trans Am, the second one is just as bad as the first. Other elements of the Trans Am body style kit include the uh, fender flares front and rear, and it also has a rear uh, ducktail spoiler. The Trans Ams have always had a killer styling element in the hood scoops. The 69s had their dual snorkel steel hood, and the 70, they carried it through with a functional shaker hood scoop. The shaker hood scoop is unique because on a Ram Air 4 car, it's functional. You put your foot all the way to the floor, and a little flap door opens and allows fresh air to come into the engine. And that scoop rattles when you get on it. It's just a cool experience. And these Trans Ams not only looked fast, they ran really hard, especially this one, because it had the Ram Air 4 400 cubic inch V8 under the hood. These things made 370 horsepower at 5,500 RPM and 445 foot-pounds of torque at 3,900 RPM. The second generation F-Body has a longer nose than the first gen, so it's not so cramped under here. The mystique about why the Ram Air 4 motor made so much power is because of the selection of parts and the way they put it together. These engines weren't necessarily hand-built, uh, but they were built to some of the tightest tolerances that Pontiac ever did, so that they were as close to the original blueprint specs as possible, making them good candidates to be high-performance engines. Uh, the combination started with that shaker hood scoop on top, feeding a specially jetted Rochester Quadrajet carburetor. They had an aluminum dual plane intake manifold, and then they had the Ram Air 4 cylinder heads. And these cylinder heads were very unique in the fact that they had a very large round exhaust port. The intake valve is 2.11 inches in diameter. It's got a swirl polish on it, so it sucks in air real fast. It's got a 1.77 inch exhaust valve, and again, the round exhaust port. 67 cc combustion chambers, which made this thing have a 10 and a half to one compression ratio with forged pistons and a forged crankshaft. It had cast steel rods, but the block was a four bolt main, special oiling provisions, uh, and everything again designed to be revved at high RPM. Another piece of the puzzle is the camshaft, which is essentially the same as the Ram Air 2 cam from a couple of years previous but now they used a longer 1.65 to 1 rocker arm so that the lift at the valve was increased to 520 thousandths, over half an inch lift on a stock cam. They had uh, 308 degrees of intake duration and 320 degrees of exhaust duration. So this is a real lumpy cam designed to keep those valves open very wide and for as long of time as possible, again, to push air through this engine. You hear one of these things idle, you know it. The Ram Air 4 has a legendary idle. Uh, the exhaust consisted of some free-flowing exhaust manifolds that almost looked like headers. So these things uh, had a free-breathing design from the top of the hood all the way to the tailpipes. The rest of the driveline consists of a Muncie M20 four-speed transmission, and the 1970.5 Trans Am is the only F-body to get a 12-bolt rear end from the factory, and this one has their safety track uh, differential, which is a limited slip, and it also has a 373 gear. So this thing is going to have tons of power to launch off the line. But these were built to be road race cars as much as they were for drag racing. 
the second generation F body is widely known as being one of the best handling American cars ever built. And that consists of a special heavy spring raid in the front and rear, uh, tuned shock absorbers. These cars have a inch and a quarter front sway bar and a seven eighths inch rear bar. It's got 11 inch power front discs in the front, nine inch drums in the back, and it's rolling on 15 by seven Pontiac Rally two wheels. And there's an interesting uh, piece of trivia about the 1970 and a half 15 by seven Rally two wheel. If you look closely, you'll see that it's a 14 inch wheel face that has an added band of steel to bring it up to that 15 inch diameter. That's unique to this car only. The Trans Am has always been about style and performance, and it's none more apparent than inside the car. The dashboard on the performance side has an 8,000 RPM tachometer, oil pressure and temp gauges, a nice big 160 mile an hour speedometer, and then the other fuel and volt gauges off to the side, and a really slick engine turn panel that just looks racy. And from a style standpoint, this thing has the coolest two-tone blue interior ever put in a car. And believe it or not, on this particular car, this is the original interior. Uh, the door panels have been re-dyed, but the seat covers are all original. It's amazing how nice a condition this thing is. And it's funny, the words cool, two-tone blue interior normally don't go together until you have one of these. These second-gen cars are just so slick looking, and I love the fact that this version backed up those killer looks with awesome performance. These things weighed about 3,700 pounds. They weren't a light car, but in their stock trim with the stock uh, F60 15-inch tires, they'd run mid 14 second quarter miles all day long. But uh, faster times weren't far away if you lost the restrictive exhaust and put headers on them, put a good tune-up and uh, a slick, you know, low, low 13s, high 12s was definitely a reality. We're going to have more pictures of this super bad Trans Am on our website at musclecaroftheweek.com. And we're also going to put up a little teaser photograph on our Facebook page at Muscle Car of the Week. And we bet you can't figure it out, but you can post your guess there. And subscribe to our YouTube channel, and you'll never miss a video of Muscle Car of the Week.